Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ron Moten and the Ron Moten Show. We have the footage from the great event at Upscales. Once again, I would like to thank Brother Irving for that us use the spot. Uh, it was a great day. Everybody came together as one from the go-go community, from the business community, from patrons to this community activists who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. We are finally coming together to understand that we've done all we could by ourselves. And a lot of us have done a lot of great things, but we are understanding what we can do. We just come together just once to uplift the DMV because it's now or never as our housing is being taken away, as lifetime Washingtonians and people from the DMV can't get jobs anymore, whether you have a degree or not, as returned citizens can't get employment, as clubs and bands are being sanctioned with Jim Crow laws. Yeah, Jim Crow laws. Did you know that DJs are now not allowed to play in PG County in certain spots? Did you know that you can't put cabaret on the fly? Did you know that you can't sell tickets on the fly? Did you know that you can't promote your event through social media in PG County? Doesn't it sound like Jim Crow? Well, look at the footage and you see how people are coming together and they have awakened sleeping giants. And I just love it because this reminds me of 1963 when the unsung heroes came together and saved the country. And we coming together to save the DMV. Get out the way because here we come. If you're not doing what's right by us, we're not going to do right by you. We're going to get you out the way. Elected officials, go ahead and sleep on them. The people who came in that room are the people I've been waiting to come together because guess what? They have networks of over 200,000 people in the DMV. And they can, they can decide every election if they want to. So we ain't not here to attack anybody. We hear citizens saying that we want to be treated like ordinary people. But right now, it's inhumane what's being done to us, our children, our seniors, our community. Take a look at the footage, spread it to your friends, and we're going to update you all on the next meeting. We're going to let you know everything that's going on. And we need your input. Those who didn't make it to the last meeting, over 200 people came out. We got so many things coming. We just need you to get with the movement. We love you so much. If you want to send suggestions of what we should do, if you were at the meeting, things we should do better or whatever, we open. We need you. Send it to the other side media at yahoo.com. It's our turn, y'all. God bless. Peace and love.
these business owners have been uh, hit hard with a lot of these footloose laws that are being passed, and um, we just want to give them a round of applause for coming out. Change what's going on, not just with go, but what's going on in our community. <clears throat> because a lot of us don't realize the power we have. A lot of us don't realize the power in music. If you, if you know your history, you will know that every movement that happened in the United States, music had something to do with it. From organizing to get your word out. So we have a responsibility in the music community, not only to save our music and culture, but to help save what's going on and save our people. So to give a little history, we're going to go back to how a lot of this stuff happened. It goes back to Washington, D.C. Uh, Club U. If you all read Natalie Williams, Natalie Hopkins' book, when she said the death of the child the city, she talked about how after Club U got shut down, then the businesses in that area got shut down, and then the gentrification set in. And it spread into all the city, H Street and other areas in the city. And now the last part of the city that's going to happen in is in Anacostia, where they both had two major developments, one by the big chair and one in Congress Heights. Two billion dollar developments. And most of them don't include us, because I've been behind the scenes in the meetings, and we're not included. So fast forward to PG County. You got the harbor, you have a lot of nice plans coming. But once again, we're not in those plans. And part of uh, seeing those plans come through is shutting down the clubs, shut down the people who kept PG County relevant when nobody else wanted to be here, just like Club U kept U Street relevant when nobody wanted to be there except for going to Club U and Ben Chili Bowl. So the good thing about this is we can get ahead of the horse if we all organize and come together and understand that we've done a lot by ourselves. But just imagine what can happen if we all come together. And a lot of us, you know, I don't mess with this person, I don't mess with that person, and all that stuff. We can keep on doing that, but every other nationality and group that's coming to D.C. and Maryland, they working together. And a lot of them don't like each other. A lot of them don't like working with each other or talking to each other, but guess what? If you look at what my Ethiopian brothers have done in Washington, D.C., they get them together. They put their money together. They put their, their resources together and they do what they have to do. And everybody else does it, but we get mad at them. But we should be mad at, our, at ourselves. So what I'm doing is I'm asking everybody to join the movement. We've been meeting with economics, folks, different people. It's not just about goals. It's about understanding how to be relevant and being a part of the change that's coming. It's about holding our community accountable. One of the other things I want to say before we move forward, I just want to give you all a little history. One of the things that's been put out there is that GoGo -Go has not been responsible. How many of you all were part of the meetings that we had in the Mad Chef when they were shutting the clubs down and we did something never done before? We brought P PG County officials, the uh, state's attorney's office, MP, I mean, I'm sorry, PG Police Department, uh, the bands, the promoters, the, the uh, business people, and everybody together from D.C., the police department, the mayor's office, everybody. And we came together to put a plan in place to deal with violence and to bring, to, excuse me, to make GoGo -Go relevant and uplift our culture and also use, use as a vehicle to help PG County and D.C. like some of us have done on our own. And what happened was, right after four or five meetings, we had the MOU ready to be signed. But a corrupt politician took money from a corrupt club owner who did not want to abide by the rules we put in place. And D.C. couldn't sign the MOU by themselves. So I just want people to know for the record that some responsible people in GoGo -Go did step to the plate. We have people from Backyard. We have people from different bands in the community who came to the table, put all that stuff aside, and said we can bring about change. So what we're doing is this is not a Ron Moten thing. We plan on, and we're not planning on the first week of March, it will be a corporation. And it's going to be a cooperative where people can not only address the issues, but we can make money together. A lot of people don't know about Susu. We already got brothers who are doing 
horse too soon. Like, we don't value ourselves. Like, I give you a prime example. One of the ones I just joined, a brother by the name of Kamon Freeman from We Are We Are Radio just started, where everybody is putting fifty dollars together a month, and he got he was able to get a hundred people within three weeks of, to agree to him here at our first meeting on Thursday. And at the end of the year, just putting fifty dollars up, we have sixty thousand dollars to invest in a big project that we want to do. Right? We can do all type of things if we come together. And there's a lot of people going to leave out here and say, man, I ain't with that and that. But those who are ready to do something, those who are tired of trying to do everything on your own, we coming together because we understand that negative things happen when positive people do nothing. We understand everybody is a piece to the puzzle that we come together. We understand that we don't always have to agree. We understand that friction makes diamonds. Look, as long as everybody's heart is in the right place. So that's what we try to do. You know, if people got differences, let's sit down at the table and iron them out. We met with Karen Toes from all the organizers we were doing. They called us and wanted to meet. We met with Karen Toes and had a two hour meeting with her. Let her know how we felt about a lot of things she's done all the way back to years ago. Years ago, we went to the hearing before CB 18, 2000. 11 was in place and she told us, do you live here? She told us, she talked to doctors there, he testified. She talked to us like we were children, snapped on us. Didn't even want to hear what we had to say. But guess what, she's running this year. And she won with 3,500 votes. And go go alone can get 3,500 votes in one day, we organized. So she won't want to meet. But it's, it's bigger than that. It's about us creating an agenda and a platform, not just in D.C., but in, in Merlin, PG County, Montgomery County, because we have received calls from all the counties saying that this is happening here too. We've received calls all the way from New Orleans because the same thing is happening right now in New Orleans. They are starting to pass laws to take away their culture where they can't even play horns outside. So they want to partner with us and do this on a national level because we come to agreement that this is not just not a DC thing. And we're calling this the Footloose Law. How many of y'all watch Footloose? How many of y'all remember the movie? Y'all remember how the, the Footloose Law? When they, when they, they cast kind of like Jim Crow all over again. So we have to come together, pull our resources together to address this, to get this out to the masses. And we have the committees. <clears throat> the um, we go go rebranding committee. We've already started working on projects where we put we working on. We ask people to be a part of. We're doing a soundtrack with the with the community, and the soundtrack is we ain't going nowhere. And then we're doing a documentary showing what happened from Club U all the way up to now, so people will know the real story, so we can educate the young people. We've had people reach out to us. We want to create curriculums for schools, showing them the history of DC music going all the way back to Duke Ellington, all the way up to Go and put the end of school. These are school officials. And I want you to understand something. <coughs> if they tore down Marvin Gaye's house in Washington, DC, and didn't want to save that, what makes you think they won't save our music without a fight? They won't save our housing without a fight. Right there on 58, we tried to save his house. And people who look like us didn't care and let him turn down Marlon Gay's house in Washington, D.C., a historic landmark. All the community's names are changing. Everything is changing. And we're not included in it. So I, we, we don't have a lot of time. Time is running out. But like I said, the Susus, they still have condominiums in Southeast Washington, D.C. for $30,000. We got that in this room right here. We're just not coming together. We can utilize our music and our network to do whatever we want to do. So I ask people to get with this. We have people, other people. Um, we have uh, the brother that's running against Carol Toes. 
Mr. Branch, Chris Branch, who's going to speak later. All right, well, we have other people that we want to bring up to explain what's been going on. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to go to the program and we'll be a wrap a little later, get feedback from, from, from the audience, and hopefully we can make something happen possible. Hopefully all you all be down with it. I'm Dan. You know, a lot of people don't know my story. They think they know my story. You don't know my story, but can't nothing stop me. Everything that can be thrown at me has been thrown at me. Can't stop me. Because I got God with me, and I've helped my people. I've helped my people. When you help your people, they can say what they want to say, but they can't stop. There's a lot of people that talk, but there's a lot of people don't do nothing. And those who try to do something, trust me, if it's just 20 of us, if it's just 20 of us, we can do it. It's better with hundreds, but we can start with 20 serious people and do whatever we want to do, as long as everybody's serious and commit. So, without further ado, oh, and the DJs, that's it easy. I want to thank you for coming out too, because now they're doing the same thing to the DJs. They started with Go Go and the DJs. Next thing they're going to tell you, you can't dance in church. Because you're, it's illegal. No, it's illegal to dance in church. Because you have to have a license. You have to have a dance hall license. So, if, they want to, if a church, a reverend says something they don't like, he can come and say, Look, Tony Lee, y'all can't dance in church today. Y'all can't do that logo up in there because you don't have a license. They can do that if they want to. Just know that this sister opened up a business and got shut down in three days. Three days after she opened up. After she got her paperwork work done. Three days. So I'm, let me get quiet. And... <laughs> and changing the whole dynamic, the way that they teach our kids, um, the way that we educate our youth, our returning citizens, making sure that they're included, making sure that they have jobs so they're not going back to jail because of economic situations. <coughs> because all of our returning citizens, most of the time that are out color, um, went to jail because of an economic situation, you know, trying to trying to take care of their family. So um, when I say be a part of this, really be a part of this. Don't just come, you know, show a little <coughs> love, but make some changes, and uh, that starts with each and every one of you. So um, I'm going to move on and get uh, Dan Richards. I just want to say one thing that's important. All the people who are affected by this is not going up. You got print shops. You got bartenders. The Legend Nightclub, this brother almost lost his mind. He had 44 staff. And because they want to build townhouses right there, they came and stashed this property. And then when we met with Karen Toe, she said that he should have served food. And I said, sister, I, this is what I do. Y'all did that for condos that y'all built. She said, yeah, but he could do that. Anywhere from there, he could build a, a store that people to work with, a restaurant there. See, these are the type of games they playing with us. But you got bartenders, you got uh, uh, print shops, you got people who sell paper, security, sound men. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's like a domino effect. Cleaning companies. So you're talking about thousands, thousands of people who are being affected. When Chuck Brown started this, he started an industry. It wasn't just music. Just remember, it was an industry he started. Thousands of jobs. So this is affecting our community. This is causing brothers to go back to prison and sisters. This was a way that people who can do something they love can make money and take care of themselves. So this is important. This is real important. I just wanted to say that because a lot of people don't understand the effect that this has. It's much bigger than just the music. This is affecting thousands of people. And this was early. We had an underground mob that nobody could take from us. And if it keeps going the way it's going, the only place that people hear go to music is in the 930 Club, the Lincoln Theater, the Howard Theater, and we don't control none of those. You won't be making no money promoters. You won't be making no money fly companies. You won't, you won't be making no money sound companies. And then, I mean, y'all saw the Grammys. Y'all see how it's going? All right? Go-Go is real. This is something we own. This is something that hasn't been taken from us. Once again, y'all saw the Grammys. All right? Just like rock and roll. 
It's like jazz and everything else. If you don't take what you created, you won't have it. How y'all doing this evening? Let me see if I need to talk to y'all. Um, my name is Dan Richardson. I'm a uh, ex club owner here in PG County. I used to own Plaza 23 in Vincent. Um, for those that do know, I've been doing this for a very long time. I've been in the entertainment from DJing to promoting parties to um, running clubs now. I mean, we do this for the love. You know, all of us love it. If it's in your blood, we're going to keep it going. But the thing is that, um, that I want to talk to you guys about today that don't know about this, the CBA team all the past in 2011. Like, you know, show of hands that are aware of it, if you're all aware of what's, you know. And that's what we call it the Footloose, um, the Footloose Law here in PG County because they are requiring all clubs to have this. But I don't know if you guys are ever taking a look at the application for this. Um, to get this uh, license, there's a checklist on there that, you know, if you was a, a, a Harvard student, you would have failed it. I mean, it's, it's, it's the requirements on this thing is ridiculous. Oh, sure. I, you still got that up there, I'm sorry. Um, and most club, most business, if you took this around to many businesses around here, that most businesses will not have the opportunity to um, have all of these items on this checklist done. It's like almost impossible to have these things done immediately. So what has happened to a lot of us, y'all know that you haven't heard anything about all the clubs being shut down together. We've been shut down one by one, and the only reason we've been shut down one by one is because we could not afford to keep our businesses open. Um, they, they, they didn't tell us that we had to shut our business down, but they stopped us from having events Current, uh, certain events that we could not open our doors. You know, then, like I said, with this foot law, foot loose law, I mean, I had to have a dance license. We all had to have a dance license, but you can go in the park a lot, dance all you want, and they come in there and say, we see somebody dancing, and they will come in there and serve you a violation, which was a felony, you know. And, and, and we don't, we not trying to get locked up. We just want to run businesses these days. So what we try to do is, with this CBA team law, uh, we want, oh, we, we, we want to approach it with DC Music. We're going to come back. We want this approach. We understand that this thing is, is not right. And for businesses to continue and for new businesses to grow or come to uh, Prince George's County, we at, D, we at DC Music are going to re-approach this to, uh, to the governor and understand that this is not right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, those things like if you are an ex-offender, you can't have a club. You can't, you can't own a nightclub. You know, I mean, they do background checks on us. They do, they, you know, it's, like, again, I'll show you guys, you know, this checklist, you can pass it around and see all the things that's going on, but um, it's almost impossible. So, like I said, we want everybody, I mean, the whole Google community, you know, you know, it seems like we all target Google community and, and small black businesses. We you know, we all want us all to come together and, and join DC Music as we go forward. Um, the fight for this bill. So that's what that's the biggest move that we're gonna do here with DC News. So we're gonna go through the agenda uh, real fast. We can have some dialogue. Uh, is Butch here yet? Butch. No, I'm not. The Butch from um, Butch. Butch. We ain't got yet. So I was. So I was the brother who did the event, uh, no, the brother who did the event at the um, New Carroll Hotel that got shut down on New Year's. Is any of the other promoters here from the New Year's event? No? Okay, so we'll move, we'll move past that. So, I'm going to bring up, uh, from Peoples for Change, this is somebody who we've been working with, Sean Pruitt, I hope I pronounced it right. We've had several meetings with her. And one of the things they want to do is help um, the Go-Go community get organized. Uh, they want to help bands and corporate who are not incorporated to incorporate their entities. And they're willing to work with us for free to help you all do that. Because one of the things that we understand is when we get organized and we start paying tax dollars, then we have more of a voice. 
right, we have more credibility. So she wants to talk about some of the things that's going on in the county as well. And this is somebody, many people who've come to the table who are willing to partner with us and work with us to enhance what we try to do. Thanks, Ron. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Sandy Pruitt, and I'm the Executive Director of the People for Change Coalition. We are a membership organization with over 300 minority businesses and nonprofits, and our mission is to help develop that sector by providing support and expansion services and resources to that population. Uh, what uh, brought me to this issue, one of our members, All Right Productions, I'm just going to uh, touch a little bit on what happened on New Year's Eve. They uh, called me, and um, two nights before New Year's Eve, they had an event planned at the Metro Points Hotel with Andy Stone in a band, and they were informed by the county that their event had to be shut down at the last minute. The biggest moneymaker night uh, of the year, and their event uh, was shut down. So I immediately uh, emailed representatives from the county exec's office, the county council, because I wanted to know what was going on that they could not have alerted him. He had a contract in place well in advance. Why was he not alerted in time so he could make adjustments and changes? He had to end up moving his event uh, to D.C., a uh, lot of uh, money lost, uh, a lot of inconvenience, and it wasn't right. So I told the county they should have taken the high road and let him continue to have his event and determine what was going on afterwards. But that's not how, how they play the game. And um, what I'm here today is to say that we together uh, can create a movement where we start putting people in office who represent our interests. officials are black and they look like us, but they don't represent us. Uh, they get behind closed doors, backroom deals, and they don't want to listen to our issues. So what we've done with the People for Change Coalition, uh, we've mobilized to become a collective voice. And the only type of voice they're going to hear is when we come together and say, now, don't let them pick us off one by one, but we come together with our issues. And when I look at uh, the crowd that's here tonight and the power that you have here in this room, as promoters, as business owners, entertainers, you have, and your parents, uh, you own property in the county, you're contributing to the growth and wealth of this county, but yet you do not have a say on the laws and the quality of life that's being impacted around you. And until you collectively come together uh, as a collective voice, you're not going to have any, any say. You got the uh, National Harbor has been built, you got the casino coming, and when the casino comes, what they're going to want to do is everybody to spend their money at the National Harbor and shut down the clubs here. Well, we need to stop that train before it starts moving. Up. And, and one of the things that we've done that's been effective, when there's a major issue that we care about. We uh, go to the county council, we go in groups, we dress alike, and uh, we have our agenda. And when they see that room being packed, that gets their attention. But when one or two people might email or call or say something, they don't understand. They feel like they do not have to do anything. And they love the fact that we are complacent. Uh, one of the things that our group did uh, a few years ago, we did a town hall on crime. And, and one of the things we brought to their attention is that when black men, uh, you see three or four black men hanging out in the corner, they call that loitering. When you see uh, 10 Hispanics over at the Home Depot or Lowe's, that's not loitering. So what we ask them is, what is the law? And we want the law to be followed of the, the, across the board for everybody, and not just some. But not until you start demanding and saying that you have a voice, they're going to continue to do what they do. And when, when you look at Prince George's County, we are a majority black county. We are all, all of our elected officials here are Democrats. So we can't blame the Republicans for what's going on in Prince George's County. We need to look at the Democrats that we're putting in office 
and are they representing um, our issues? We also need to look at not letting people stay in office for 20 and 30 years um, as well, because they get complacent. We need to look at what's going on with our school system. We, while they say Maryland is number one in, in the school system, we rank at the bottom. Prince George's County and Baltimore City, the two majority black districts and county in the whole state of Maryland, rank at the bottom. Something's wrong with the picture. So I know many of you might be parents, have kids in the system, you're, you're business owners, you contribute to the tax base here in the county. We cannot sit back and not let our voice be heard. So I'm asking everybody to join in on the, the movement. Um, some of the things we can do immediately, um, leaving here, we can organize, we can all join one central group. There can be a coalition, the DC Music. Everybody should be a member. Uh, that should be a voice. We should let the elected officials know how large, not just how many um, people are members of the movement, but how many people you touch. For example, we have over 300 members, but we touch over 200,000 homes. They need to hear those kind of numbers, and that will get their attention. We also need to look at um, candidates that we can put in office that will represent our interests. Otherwise, we have the major developers and other special interests who don't live in our county coming in and picking the elected officials that are going to work on their behalf. So we have to, I know a lot of black people say, well, I don't want to be political. Well, I don't want to get involved. Well, if you pay taxes, if you have a business, if your kids are in the school system, and if you spend any dollars in our county, you need to be political. So. And so you also look at how in, in the county, um, they created all these, I call them tracks. Um, anytime they see black people getting anywhere, it seems like here comes another trap. And um, until we put people in, in office who are going to listen to us and help things that we care about, we put our issues to the table, nothing's going to change. So we need to uh, leave here tonight with some action steps. Number one, everybody collectively being a member of DC Music, joining some of the committees, setting some goals, maybe two or three goals for each committee, uh, setting timelines on when those goals are going to be completed. And I think one of the major action items is uh, showing up at the county council hearing as a large entity and group and uh, making them listen to us. That will get some attention. So I look forward to, to working with anybody. If anybody uh, needs help with, we also help with nonprofits. Uh, we represent nonprofits and minority businesses in the county. Uh, we help with incorporation. We help with strategic planning, uh, business planning and marketing. So if any of you all uh, would like to be a part of our uh, People for Change Coalition, we're not only in Prince George's, we're in DC, Montgomery County, uh, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore, Charles County. So we are rapidly growing and we look forward to working with you. The limits of tyrants are prescribed by the endurance of those who they oppress. And right now we're being oppressed and we're not fighting back. And we can fight back. We have the resources, we have the talent. I was just talking uh, to a lawyer who's working on getting the ACLU to represent the go-go community right now. Because after looking at everything that's going on, he said there are some First Amendment issues going on, right. and there's some civil rights issues going on. Yes, yes. And if people see us doing what we are doing here today, it's going to be a lot easier doing that. This particular lawyer was the top lawyer of the ACLU in D.C., and he's helping me with some stuff right now. So he's trying to work with the people in Merle. Appreciate our fighting soldier, Sister Jill, who's always there, standing with us and forth. Thank you for coming out, Sister. We appreciate you because one thing, we have to get this out to the masses. We have to know, let people know what we're trying to do and what's happening to us. One of the things that happened during the 60s 
the way the war was won was, was shaming the people who were oppressing the people and letting the world and people know what was going on. A lot of people really don't know what's going on. Some of the people don't even like go-go music, but they see what's happening and they understand. They're smart enough to understand if this can happen to us, it can happen to them. Just like they're doing with the DJs, next they'll be doing with the rappers. And then they'll be telling you that you gotta have a stop sign on your car to get a wash. I mean, I'm serious. That's what they did doing Jim Crow times. It's not a joke. If we let them do one thing, they will do another. So we'll take questions or suggestions from the audience and then we want to do... Okay. Um, we'll we're, we're take, take, take the questions from the audience and then we'll go to Mr. Branch and let a few other people speak. I just want to make a quick comment. My name is Jacques Chevalier and I'm native born in Washington and I used to work with people with change. We helped stop the soccer stadium from coming to Fiji County a few years back. They wanted to build that, take all of our tax money, over $100 million, and provide many of jobs. Not one of those politicians would have put any of their kids there. So we, if you work together, Sandy Pruitt, that their organization, the fine organization, also two current schools, is the biggest snake on the county council. She came to court one time, lying on me about some garbage that had nothing to do with her whatsoever. She's on the tape, she's a fraud, and she's the most corrupt politician besides Jack Johnson. And I'm surprised they ain't got her ass in jail.
coming into, into the community, they should be greeted with like a welcome package or some type of welcome something committee that comes from their office. So I would suggest, even with Bruce Branch here, I say, listen, every new business that comes into the, like for instance, for the, uh, the promoters, for instance, happen to register their businesses. Come up with, say, for instance, we're at, um, at Earth's. If the capacity here is 200, we can use that as a formula to say 200 times, uh, I guess, whatever, how much the tickets will be, divide that into something and come up with a tax. And that way, if that tax is at least paid, because that's all it's about is money. That's all they want. It's money. They're so mad that promoters are making so much money that they cannot be accounted for. So promoters are walking away with thousands of dollars in their pocket, you know, and the county not get anything of that. That's what their problem really is. So they're making up every excuse possible. If this is our culture, if this is what we're supposed to do as far as follow a guideline of business, we're business owners, not just promoters, not just a restaurant owner. No, we're not just. Okay? We are entrepreneurs. We are business executives. No matter, no matter how you look at it, whatever your job is, your job, your street promoter, you are a door opener, you greet a bell pop, whatever it is, you are a business owner first. So with that said, you have my support. And I also have a business called the Boss Network Corporation. There's Boss Lady Network and there's GQ Boss Network for Men. I have a whole of CEOs that gather together under one platform and we teach the youth how to make CEO decisions when it comes to adversity. That's my business, that's what I do. So with that in mind, you have my word that I will definitely help you with. I have all the bosses on my side. But if your business says from New York to wherever, you name it, I have that, okay? All right. Because he got these. We won't bring up the golf hub of all this stuff up in a minute. And one thing I want to say is there are a lot of people who are incorporated, like Red S's and Mega Faces and a lot of groups in here are incorporated. So uh, Chocolate City and a lot of other bands and entities are incorporated. So let's be clear, a lot of people do have their stuff right, but we need to get everybody else right because when we do that, we have a base, a tax base, and a revenue base that we can show what we have. The other thing is, understand how business moves. If you can do, utilize performers to show your revenue, then we can come together and do a lot of things. All the stuff I see happen, people were able to show with performers what they can do, and then the political connections from people showing your unity, with those two together, you can get whatever you want. But you gotta have both. You gotta have both. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I stand here today as a former member of our society, like many of us here before we found the music. And uh, if it wasn't for the music to bring my attention from the streets, I wouldn't be here today. A lot of you know me, and I know a lot of y'all from my past. And um, it hurts me to see our music and us go through these things that we're going through at this point. And um, I can't understand why instead of politicians demonizing the music, uh, use it as a tool. Like, if, if one of the politicians here go to a school, they don't know me. But if gigs go to a school, or I go to a school, stop them, or stop any other musician in here that goes to a school, the kids look up to them, and they are role models. Uh, and it's, it's been proven with a piece of art, it's wrong moving, and uh, gigs and other members of uh, the Go-Go community have stopped wars in the street that the police can't even stop. So instead of demonizing the music, we have we have something in common. We we as musicians, we can't stop the violence in the club. The politicians can't even stop it in the street. And, and our creator uh, can't stop acts of violence. I mean, if it's, if, if, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. So you expect us as musicians or people, when everything is in place, the cameras are in place, the security is in place, the police are in place, even when the police were getting furloughed, uh, this music still gave them money to feed their families. So if it wasn't for, I came home an ex felon couldn't get a job for a year. Go go put food on my table to feed my kids. And I stayed off the street. The music gave me hope and a glimmer. And I stayed with it. So I'm still here today. And all the school I go around, I don't get, I don't broadcast it. Uh, but I go talk to the youth all the time, and they have the same 
put that same blame. Yeah. But they kill our music and kill our people. And the only been a part of uh, East Gate area over the day talking to the youth, uh, with Brother Evan Allen, uh, trying to prevent some of the things that's going on. But they don't see that. I don't see any of the politicians over there when these things occur. So if they, I'm not pointing the fingers at the politicians. We hope that they are not pointing the fingers at us. We have something in common that we want to stop that's violence in our community, in our streets. And instead of oh, cutting music out, use it as a tool to help our youth. I want to reiterate, we don't know everything. This is just the beginning. So we need everybody. We need everybody's thoughts, everybody's experience. Everybody brings something to the table. So I want to reiterate that. I see brothers from the hip hop community in here who've been around for a long time. I see patrons in here. I see people who are ready for change. So it's up to us to be the change that we want to see. Thank you. First of all, say uh, good evening, everybody. For all of you guys that don't know me, my name is Breeze. I've been in this city for a little while. <laughs> Fighting this, I've been fighting this war a long time. You guys just started. And the reason that I'm out here this evening is because there's a number of things that I wanted to tell you guys that when I first started fighting this thing a long time ago, you spoke about the Ibex. One of the things that I found out about the Ibex is when they closed it down, they said it was because the police had got shot on the outside. But when they didn't take into consideration when all of the community people were standing around like a lot of the community people do today and start sticking out their chest about we closed down the Apex and we did this. I had a white lady over in the neighborhood where I was, I own a place called Breezes Metro Club. I had a lady over there was doing the same thing. But what happened is that when they closed down the Apex, they failed to realize that they put at least 1,100 people out of work. They never talked about that. Never talked about that. They had guys who was playing in bands that had been incarcerated. So it came out and these were their jobs. They stopped them from going back to jail. It's the same thing now. You got a lot of you guys in here who were in bands that I've known for years. And this was your income. Now that they've taken that income from you, what they tell you, what you gonna do? You stand on these corners in front of the liquor stores, and like the man said when the police come along, they tell you move along. When you don't move along, what happens is you get locked up. When you get locked up, you get a number on your back. That means you're calm. That calm means that that number can follow you all the rest of your life. So the point that I'm trying to make to you is this. Number one, I don't have a number on my back. I've been accused of robbing. I was, <laughs> I was accused of robbing banks, pimping ladies, selling drugs. I've been accused across the board. But the bottom line is all I did was hard work. And one of the primary things that I found as far as the younger guys in the audience is concerned, like I just got over here, G. I used to pull his coat, tell him, come in. So listen, all this stuff you're talking about as far as the police is concerned, do your job and you stay out of trouble and you keep your bills paid and you keep your kids paid. But now they try and take that away from you. I feel, I feel real bad for a lot of you young guys because one of the bands that I knew she used to play in my place, guys went to rob the bank and three of them was involved in it. It's been a while ago. But that's just some of the things that are happening as far as the city is concerned. But what I really want to talk to you guys about is this. This is a flyer that I put out when this bill first hit PG County. The problem is that most of the people who go to the dances and the go-go's and things like that, they don't know nothing about this bill. I put out 5,000 of these, and I gave it to, what's his name? Um, Tug, the rest of the guys. 
I gave it to my other guys. They never even passed them out. So the question is, I took the money out of this pocket. I didn't ask them for it. I took it out of this pocket. I'm a line G. Okay. And I said, if you guys took these flyers, went to the shopping centers, and went to the meetings where these people were, and you put it in people's hands, and you can see how many jobs that they're taking away from you, and how many places that they're closing, then you could have stopped this a long time ago. A long time ago. Now, it's got to the point where it's just about unstoppable. I don't, I don't mean it harm, it's just about unstoppable. But, take Plaza 23. Take, uh, 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 Eric's, what was Eric's place on Central Avenue? Uh, La Pearl. Take La Pearl. You can't take uh, some of the other places that take Legends. If you took each of those places and you put them down on a flyer, a flyer, and beside each of them things, each club, you put how many people were put out of work as a result of this bill and this lady and this baker, Sean Baker. If you put all of that down and they could count how many people are out of work, they could count how much money the county has lost as a result of that. Then the people who are looking at this, they have something they can look at and say, wait a minute, this is happening? This is happening? Most of the people in these councils and stuff like that, they never even stuck their head in the doors. I ran four clubs, four successful clubs. Understand me? And at this stage of the game, what it happens for my club is concerned, I tried to learn every little thing that I could to help me stay afloat. Learn from a lot of guys. I do a cable TV show now, and I'm constantly talking about these things. Because most of the older people, they don't know it. If you don't put it in black and white, they don't know it. If you don't talk about it, they don't know it. Stop being envious and jealous of one another and pull yourselves together. If you can put out, if you had 10,000 flies in here tonight that said uh, Legends was closed down because the chief of police would not give this man security to stay open. That's right. That's the truth. <coughs> As a result, the ABC board said if you can't get no police, we can't give you your license. As a result of that, he had to sell. Granted, his business has been there a long time. Bottom line is whatever the case may be, if he or if you as a unit printed it, what they did to him, print it. And you don't know about it, you don't read that. You understand? You read it and give it to somebody else. Then when they go into these meetings where Ms. Curran tolls, Mr. Rashawn Baker, is that? Well, he doesn't know anything about this. You understand? But the difference is, you know who it happens to? Us. What's the name of the place on Central Avenue, the big church? They got a license. Not the, not the gym, what is it? The camel. They got a dance license? Does the uh, hotel down, what's your name, have a dance license? Do they have a license? The point I'm trying to make to you is this. The same license that they're forcing you to have, they had never even issued. I told you guys, I said they're going to get you one at a time. And that's exactly what they did. Yep. They picked you off one time. at a time. Every time you had something happen, they come and tell you you had an incident on the outside or whatever the case may be. Where's your dance hall license? You don't have one. We put in for it. Okay, well, that's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the end of that.
Big G Glover, HBO Wide, 12 Years Slave, but most importantly, Go Go, DC, Dana, hold my star. Yeah. This brother, if you all saw the footage that went out a couple of weeks ago, showing all the work that he's done in the community over the years, working with gang. This brother joined us, and we had one of the major gang truces in the city of Washington, D.C. was done in a nightclub, and we recorded it. We recorded Chopper City Wood, I mean Lynch Mob. They were beefing for years, couldn't even go to school. One neighborhood couldn't even go to high school for four years. And Go-Go helped resolve that beef, and a lot of other things. Beefs all over the city. This brother helped us get 161 children in college. You won't hear those stories. You won't hear it. This brother helped us get legislation changed in D.C. for returned citizens. He made his voice count. And there's a lot of other brothers in this place right here who have a voice, who have power. Everybody has power. N.E.G. Y'all here too. Capitol Heights, all these neighborhoods that love y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Where we at, rapper? Uh, I see you back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta get involved, bro. This real. All right? This real. So I'm gonna bring the brother up, but this brother is, a, is proof that if given an opportunity, our people can do whatever they want to do. So what we're doing is not just for us, it's for our children. All these other people got together in schools and marching bands and stuff like that. They took our music out of the schools for over 10 years. That hurt our music as well. There's a lot of things we can't say in this speak. There's so many things that happened that affected us. It's up to us to do something about it. I just, you know, just want to let y'all know we got to do this. How y'all doing? For the whole go go community. This is like really sad. Cause um, this is the only time we come together. When they when they take us home from us. We keep telling each other we gonna get together, we gonna do this for us, we don't do it. When everybody making a little piece of money, everybody cool with it. Okay? So I'm not up here to be no preacher, none of that, but this reality is real. Okay, like when Breeze got up here was saying about the Ibex, I've been fighting this war for a long time. Little, little dude fight this war. And um, I learned from Chuck when he told me, don't let your music die, son. You should meet him and we used to sit and talk at Starbucks here and say, look, you doing something good for our music in our city. Don't do good and then go get caught with a, a, a 45. But everybody else was glorifying that, just like Wincy in my band. He said, man, look, they want you to act like a fool. Breeze used to pull me, say, man, look, you big dummy. You got all this talent and you running out here playing with, with ammunition because there were no guys. Same with Mo, Jahar. They said, man, slow down, y'all. You got talent. The same thing I tell these kids out here right now. Back y'all, we play in D.C. The, the trade wins and the legend clothes. Now, how many club owners in Brown we got here right now that's open? One. BG County, right? Which your clubs? Lamont. 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 They won't let back y'all in there. But I'm still here for the fight. They might not even let me pull up in the parking lot. <laughs> It's real, real talk. But I'ma still fight, and I'll stand out there and fight for your club all day. You ain't gotta let me set a stab, sir, because this is my culture, and I won't let my music down. How many of y'all watch the news? How many of y'all read the Washington Post? Do y'all know how many murders in the last two weeks in District Heights has been? Anybody? Five. Did you see that on Channel 8? That one time. Not no Google Music did. That's right. Listen, politicians though, they keep it under the rug. All 
there's a district heights mayor, he has to vent. Them our young black brothers getting slammed. It's a whole process, a circle. If you don't know nothing about your culture, you need to learn it. This is what we stand for. I fight for this music every day, daily. I will never stop fighting for it because this is what we are. Club owners, a lot of promoters, a lot of promoters used to be band members, and a lot of them just in it for the money. Don't care nothing about our music well. at all. Don't care about it. So I'm gonna get up here and tell the truth, yeah. whether you like it or not. Because I want me back y'all. Okay? I was shot on stage in a Berlin club. We fight, my mother fight, fight, trying to get for we can sue. You know, the Chinese people sold it to two doors now to a dollar store. They resold it to somebody else because they looked, they did what? They looked out for their own kind. They flipped the business over and couldn't even, they ain't even, but see, like we say, we ex offenders. They do all the background check and we can't get a club or none of that. But those people come in. I love every culture. I was raised in Northwest Washington, Lincoln Junior High School. Went Mexican, Asian, Chinese, Spanish. My mother taught us no color. So it, it ain't no color with me. I love everybody. But they stick together with this. They gonna lock and load. They ain't gonna tell you nothing. They gonna keep their mouth shut. But we'll sell each other out. We all sitting right here today. We will we get together tomorrow? When the bill change, it change. Been fighting for this a long time. This man to take right here. I told, I saw, I walked up to Jack one day. I said, Jack, you gonna stop this shit? <laughs> Who is this? Oh, uh, you gonna stop this shit? <laughs> this is what I told him. Because at the end of the day. We keep screaming and crying and yakking and yakking. Put it together. We all keep saying we're going to get together and go and do a big tour and keep it and, and, and put our money together and do this. We ain't doing nothing. Everybody being selfish. We know everybody can play out here. Everybody can play in this circle. Every single one of us, especially the OGs that we learn from. And a lot of the young bands coming up now, it's easy for them, because it's a fad. We love this. I used to stand outside, could not get in the black hole. And I would live around it. And I couldn't get in. I used to sneak in. Then I stand on the side, Jeep. Now I got locked up and came from OQ, I was tall. Then they couldn't deny me to get in. <laughs> you stand outside, you ride my bike all the way to Southeast. It's outside, church, everything. The love of it. You used to ride down nice to be jump, y'all. Nowadays, the kids just like, oh, it's cool to be in the band, mo. I miss my mans and them, and they let me play. <laughs> <laughs> this is culture. This is what we do. This is our love of our music. You know what I'm saying? Like Lil Benny, he talked on the mic and played the horn. Pops, good time. <laughs> Nobody with me? Y'all know the history? Sugar Bear. Good time? Come on. Come on, man. Listen, what we doing is we being hypocrites right now. Let's stop being hypocrites. Don't just come together when they shut the club down. We got to always be together. We ain't saying we got to have a gourmet meal tonight, everybody together, but stick it in. Let's stop being phony, man. This music, I, won't, I ain't gonna never let it die. Cause I'm true to mine. Been fighting for it ever since a little kid. And I'm gonna keep fighting for it. But when you get up in the mirror in the morning, look yourself in that mirror and say, what you really stand for? And do you really stand for this music?
in the county council meeting. They, want, they, they have all the power, they're sitting up high like a judge, and all they want to do is embarrass you about you bringing something to them. And then they go back to their chambers and they laugh. Okay? We keep talking about they. I heard Ali mention they don't know who we are, we don't know who they are. Let me tell you, you got to start identifying who they is. Because they identify who you are. And they put the stuff in place to dismantle your entire industry, not just go-go. I heard somebody mention it's venue owners. How many venue owners raised their hand here? Two of us? Three of us? Wow. Really? That's what's left? <coughs> this is a systematic dismantling. And you haven't figured that out yet. They figured out, go to get the venues, and you have no place to play. I don't give a shit about you being an ex-offender or nothing like that. It doesn't matter to me whatsoever. Understand, that's being utilized to keep you down. You don't care about it, I don't care about it. But they've identified that's how they can get to you. If you don't start identifying who they is and start taking awards with them on their level, whether it means getting groups elected, Karen Tolles isn't the only witch. <laughs> Somebody put care and toes in the place where she is, and the other people supporting that around them. And Breeze brought forth a, a very important point. The biggest, the biggest weapon they have is mis or disinformation. People don't know this shit is going on in this industry, folks. They don't know. And unfortunately, we don't care until it gores one of our eyes. It's not just Breeze, there's a lot of people in this room were talking at, at Mad Chef and everything else about what we needed to do. And God knows, I've been trying to bring advice uh, and tell you about it. Don't care about the subject, care about what's going on. I told you guys when they put in the smoking ban, nobody hates smoke more than I do. But what they had done was figure out a way to get to you by being a well healed organization and say, hey, look, we can get the rest of the masses to donate money and to follow us if we can pick the right team. Pick Smoker Band first. Okay, and everybody got online line, didn't say much about it. Everybody's forgotten what they did to pawn shops, liquor stores, strip clubs. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm, I don't care about what the particular industry is. Their methodology is working. And until they hit a bunch of people right between the running lights on New Year's Eve this year, we weren't paying attention to it. They're not going to stop with this. Next, they're going to tell you, you can't be there. <laughs> they don't care. It's part of control, and it's part of shrinking the impact of the people that are in this room and the black and minority people in this county. If you don't think gentrification is swinging back to Prince George's County, we out your damn mind. We out your mind. Excuse me, I have to leave. I want to say something real quick, because that's why I wanted to come share my experience. I didn't have a venue. I had a tutoring center. And I'm an educational lawyer, and I work with the young man, and all of them graduated from high school, heavy impact. So they asked me, Ms. Galloway, can we please play on Friday night? And I'm, I'm not a club owner. I'm a lawyer, and I was tutoring kids during the weekend in the center. So I'm like, sure, and I let them practice, because this they were focused, they was dedicated, and it got them out of high school. They all walked across the stage. So on Friday nights, the crowds got bigger and bigger, and of course, it was violent. So I did what a sensible person would do, because he wasn't earning any money. He just earned enough money to keep the lights on. I went to the police. I said, look, we need some help here, because these kids are, you know, things are going on outside. It's beyond me. And I have tutors that are in college, but they're not security, and they're trying to sweep the area for guns and things like that. But could you all come in and help us to do this? Because we have a safe environment for these kids on Friday night. They said that PG cannot, at any of those events, be involved at all. They did not come. And then they came when they kept shooting at each other and blamed us. And not only did they shut down what we was doing with the kids on Friday, they shut down the whole tutor center. And these were kids that we got out of high school. And so it was, and I ran around, I asked everybody for this help and that help, and they basically just turned their nose up to us. So what I do know is that music keeps those kids focused. Those kids started that music in high school, in the marching.
two bands and they're into it. They have nowhere to play now. And we didn't charge the kids to get on stage. We, we, we have to work sound system. We need your help. We need you to sign up. I'm going to leave my dad and get myself and we, a basketball we practice. You to get and one thing I want to say to that, I told Dan the other day with young people, if you have a club and you have young people come there, if it's a place you wouldn't send your daughter to, you shouldn't be in business. If you wouldn't send your own daughter there, you shouldn't have that club over. And the reason why I say that is, in D.C., we have what we call the peace goals. And we did free go goals. We got the government to fund it. And when the children was on the front of the Washington Post, but for the children to get a free pass, they had to take a class on the Civil Rights Movement. And we taught them that they weren't each other's enemy. We taught them how children into segregation. And we had all the rival crews, GT, G, Polo, every band, Bounce Me, everybody played there. We didn't have one fight. And youngest were coming in with 50 and 60 dollars trying to pay to get in. And we said, no, the only way you can get in, if you take the civil rights train, am I wrong, me, why? You was the one that made the cars, am I right? Did we ever have a fight? So go go down the problem. It's understanding how to do go-go's with young people. It's understanding how to put things in place. And the likelihood of something happening is minimized. You never want to stop nothing completely. But if you do everything that you're supposed to do, and something happens, the agreement that we were meeting on, you wouldn't have been held accountable. And that's what we need to go back to. We have to hold ourselves accountable. And we have to put standards in place that makes sense, because it's our duty to protect adults and children. But we are not going to let people, after King and everybody else died, come back and bring Jim Crow laws, the type of laws we had to count things to vote. That's what they're doing now. OK, you got to get a license. But the, the license is not even available yet. How do you want to tell us we got to get a license? And you can't, it take three months for them to even approve the license. Once you, it take you three months to get the paperwork that they talking about done after you already open up and exist as a business. Ron, that's the, that, Ron, you're right, but that ain't it. What ain't it? The, the idea was never for you to get the dance license. Right, no, I know that, I know that. <laughs> but I agree with you, let me ask a question. How many people in here have a dance license? How many? How many pay you? What's your name? We no. are Okay. okay. You have a dance hall license right now. Okay. Here's the deal. It's him and me. We applied for a dance license August of 2012 at Park Two weeks ago they told us we're sure for the ninth time this is the last inspection you have to have. Wow. Jim Pro. We have had fire department, health department, health department again. They made us put in new free screeners, um, uh, new bars. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Right. You would not believe it. And they told my daughter, his wife, every week, no, that's the last inspection you're going to have. By the way, we passed every one of the inspections, so it wasn't like they were telling us something. We couldn't stay open or anything like that. You have to understand the idea was for nobody to ever get a dance license. They waited for you to be in one incident. Exactly. Yeah. Why you don't have an incident. And they Why you don't them. have it, and then they come exactly. out and nail it. Exactly right. That and the, uh, the Gestapo-style uh, task force. That's exactly right. right. They come with about 50 officers. Yeah, so you put RV and a searchlight into your door at 11 o'clock at night and do a health inspection, eight police officers get out, the liquor board gets out, and the fire department gets out and comes in a dozen inspections while the place is open. How many people feel like finishing their food while the health inspector is walking around? Let's be for real. So listen, that's what I'm talking about the days and this and that the other. Bruce, you want this job? We'll help you get this job, but you got shit to do, dog. You understand? You got shit to do.
taking on they when you got the data and you fight and you got lawyers and you organize. And that's what we have to do. And that's what we plan to do. So we want to bring up Easy and then Brother Bruce. Just want to say good evening to everyone. I just I have some questions as well as statements I would like to ask. Does anybody really know where the CD18 bill originated from? What caused it? Yeah. That's what we need to know. That's what we would like to know. Big John, I know you've experienced several levels of it. Yeah, well, it, she claimed to have enacted that bill because of all the violence that was going on at the time with the CFP and other things like that. And also, even the radio stuff. So the bill originated it because emergency. every... It was an emergency Okay, because everyone doesn't know what it's about. So it originated from one lady? Are you telling me this bill came about? She introduced the bill. Okay. Okay, that's one question. I don't know if y'all know this, but some people who have dance hall license, they have another license coming out that you're going to, what's another law coming out called the open bottle cap law. That's another law you got to look into. So we we definitely need yeah the open bottle cap. Um, myself, a couple of DJs in here, along with some of the bands, we perform at venues that are not I'm going to say not go-go related, but we play go-go music there. The Knights of Columbus, who is a Christian organization run by the Catholic Church, they just shut that down. Glen Arden, who has its own municipality. They just shut that down. So it's not about all about, I'm not going to say it's not about go-go music, but it's not about go-go music. Mm. Uh, uh. And I hate to bring up the, the demographics of color or race or anything, but it seems, you know, everyone's putting out their opinion on what it's about. I would just like someone, and I'm going to join your organization, I need someone to get to the root and find out exactly what are they attempting to do. Even though they might not want to tell you, they have to tell you what they want to do. If they're trying, I mean, some people put out, they're trying to hurt us out of our community and push everything, everything down towards the harbor. They don't want us down the harbor, for real. Just like Georgetown. They didn't want us in Georgetown. They don't want us there. So I want to be part of a team that's going to find out the cause and go after the cause. Don't go after the mayor, don't go after the congressman. I mean, you're running, Bruce, you will have a voice. You'll be our inside voice if you win. But I really don't want you to do like other politicians have. Sell us the sandwich here, but when you get there, you forgot that you put the bread and everything together. That's all right. And we want to close out after that. When they shut it down the day before, after thousands of people brought tickets, the same thing happened down the street at Best Western. So if you want to say a few words, we're going to bring Bruce up. And I just want to piggyback off of what everybody been saying again. Uh, my name is Bush for uh, I'm one of the promoters for the uh, New Year's Eve event for me and Faces to Angie Stone. We didn't get the call until two days before the event that they were just shutting us down completely. We didn't even understand why. We figured having a party at a hotel on New Year's Eve, everything would be in place. Licenses, dance hall, whatever. I got so many dumb reasons why they closed it down that didn't even make no sense. First it was, we were selling tickets online. Oh, by the way, you can't promote on Facebook. Uh, you don't have a dance hall license. Two days before the event, they didn't apply for a liquor license. All type of stupid stuff. But the bottom line, they just didn't want us there. It was just that simple. I got a call the next day from the license and permit people telling us what we need to do to get it open. They said, oh, you can have it, but guess what? You can't sell liquor. On New Year's Eve? Who the hell would not drink on New Year's Eve? Then they're gonna tell me on the news that the CB18 law was in place for individuals like myself to have parties to curb the balance. 75% of the people that bought tickets were from PG County. So who the hell are you protecting? We bought tickets. And I know it's all a plan to, to minimize or whatever, which one you want to call it. But my thing was this, we was having a nice, safe, clean event. And it really made me sick to my stomach because I live in PG, my kids go to PG. Born and raised in DC, grew up in PG now. 
And it really made me so sad because I'm like, right down the street at the National Harbor, they had 8,000 people New Year's Eve. Four bands. Did they even close them down? Hell no. They went in seven other places because we had live entertainment. Other. Other, right, other, right, other. Martin's, what's, the, what's the other one? Camelot's? Uh, Martin's? They were moving. Call me so. You know, but they didn't, they didn't, they didn't touch them. And I'm just saying right now, y'all, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, they woke up a sleeping giant. Because this shit really pissed me off. It really did. Because I paid taxes here. You know, I got on my phone, I called some of my judge people I knew. I got on the phone, I, I called Sandra. I, I called my man Jerry. I said, look, it's time for a change. I know what they're trying to do. But guess what? They need to come through us first, man. Come on. You know, we got to put people in office that got our best interest in office. It's just that simple. And Bruce, that's what I'm telling you, man. We're going to rally around you, but like Rico said, we're going to come at you every day. We're going to hold you accountable. And my thing is this. If they knew that the hotel wasn't in compliance, why is the county held accountable for that shit? Yeah. That's my thing. Who is in, in charge of that? Now you should be held accountable. Because if you knew they didn't have a dance hall license, then now guess what? We're going after you. It's just that simple. And I love Gogo. -Go. I've been listening to Gogo -Go since 1975. You know, I love Gogo. -Go. Born and raised. Was in a Gogo -Go band. And probably how most of y'all in here to do parties. So that's all I'm just saying, y'all. It's time for a change. Let's get together, man. I'm serious. Let's get together. Stop the beef. We can get together with some people we know and we make a change.